Hey, John Strohmeyer with Strohmeyer Law, where we help our clients leave no unfinished business. Now, today we're going to be answering questions about various taxes. If we don't address this, then what we could do is actually set up a situation where we're leaving more avoidable costs to our loved ones. That's one of the four horsemen of the estate planning apocalypse we really want to address. Did the IRS change the rules to take away a basis step up for assets held in an irrevocable trust? You may have seen this. I know I had a few people who've emailed this to me recently. There was an article that made the round saying the IRS has changed the rules on your child's inheritance because now assets held in an irrevocable trust are no longer subject to a basis step up. Well, the answer is no, the IRS did not change the rules. They did not quietly change the rules. These are the basic rules that have been in place for a long time. Let's start way at the beginning so we make sure that we know what we're talking about. The first thing we're thinking about, a basis step up. When we talk about basis for income tax purposes, this is the amount that we've generally invested in an asset that is not going to be subject to tax when we sell the asset later. So if you buy something, if you buy 10 shares of Exxon at $10 a piece, you've invested $100. If you later sell those shares for $20 per share, you're going to have a gain of $100. So $200 minus the $100 in invested basis that what you paid for it leaves $100 that's going to be subject to tax. Well, how can we lower our tax bill? One of the options is in the estate tax realm, if you die owning assets, you get a basis step up to the fair market value of that asset on the date of death. So generally, that's a step up in basis. It may mean that you get stepped down in some bad cases. So what happens? Again, you bought those shares at $10, and instead of going up to $20, they go up to $100 a share by the time you pass away. Now, if your beneficiaries were going to sell that, they'd be dealing with a $90 per share gain. So $100, the date of death value, minus 10, what you invested in it, $90 gain, except the internal revenue code, the IRC says you get a free ride up from 10 to hundred, no tax. If you sell those shares the day or your beneficiaries sell the shares the day after you die, they, they were included in your estate. And so you get that free basis step up. But if you had sold it the day before you died, you hadn't died yet. You hadn't died owning it. So you were going to pay that $90 worth or pay tax on that $90 worth of gain. So one of the best tax planning things we can do is have you hold on to assets that have a low basis, have a low investment, but a high amount of gain. That way you're going to get free step up in basis. Avoid ta income tax on the later sale of that asset. Now, the key to this is the assets have to be subject to estate tax. They have to be included in your gross estate because Conceptually, you're paying a state tax on it, so that's the trade-off. And for years, when we had a lower estate tax exemption amount, well, you know, this made sense. You know, uh, back in 2000, 2001, the exemption really was hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then it started going up to a million. You know, you, you were paying the, the tax rate, the estate tax exemption was much lower. So there really was this gap or, you know, the, the pieces fit together in such a way that, you weren't paying income tax on the gains, but you were going to pay a state tax. Now, here it is, 2023. The exemption amount is $12.92 million per person. That means a lot of us are getting the benefit of the basis step up, but we're not having to pay any estate tax, even though these assets are subject to estate tax. So getting back to this, what's happening? Well, part of our planning in estate tax planning is we're going to put assets into irrevocable trusts. And generally the idea is we're going to be making a taxable gift. Someone is the beneficiary of these assets and we have taken them and they are no longer in our gross estate for estate tax purposes. Once you've pulled the assets out of the gross estate, you don't have that trigger to get the basis step up. And that's generally what's going to happen in an irrevocable trust. You're giving things away. They're not going to be subject to estate tax in your estate. And the reason is we're, we're using our exemption, you know, make a million dollar gift. 
you're saying, well, we're going to take these million dollars of assets out of my estate so I don't pay estate tax on it later. We're going to use up a million dollar of the exemption and we're going to hope that the growth in the assets is going to be more than we would have paid estate tax on it. Now, the planning and picking and choosing those assets, it's a bigger topic. We're not going to get into that but today, but the thing to think about is you've given it away, and so no, you're not going to pay a state tax on it, so you're not going to get that basis bump. The IRS ruling, this is the same answer I've just explained. Like If you've given it away, all the IRS was doing in Revenue Ruling 2023-2 is saying, yeah, if you've given it away and it's not subject to a state tax, congratulations, you're not going to pay a state tax on it. You're also not going to get the benefit of that basis step up. Now, this hasn't stopped creative planners from saying, well, if this was a grantor trust and if you were paying income tax on the assets inside that trust, well, maybe we should be triggering a basis step up anyway. The IRS really put this out to say, no, that like there's no support for that. We're not going to accept that. A lot of planners, I mean, myself included, never would have advised a client that assets that aren't included in your gross estate should get a basis step up. Doesn't mean there's not a theory for it or, you know, a, how can we maybe, how would this possibly work? Yes, there's just not a lot of support for it. The thing to not read into this, it doesn't mean that assets inside of an irrevocable trust are always excluded from this basis bump. There are times where you will still get a basis bump in assets inside of an irrevocable trust. And the reason you're going to get that is, well, if you put assets in an irrevocable trust and the assets are still being used for your benefit, or you're, you, know, you, you have the ability to adjust who gets things, or you have too much control over the assets, perhaps you have a general power of appointment over those assets, then there may be ways of triggering it to come back into your gross estate so that you are getting the basis bump. So it means you've got to look specifically at your trust agreement and look at what it's saying about what happens to those assets, how much control you have. There's not a one-size-fit-all uh, answer on this, but Generally, this new, uh, you know, what people were treating as a new rule or a change in the rules, it wasn't a change in the rules. It's just codifying, kind of making clear the rationale of why the rule has been the way it has been for years. Now, remember, while I am a lawyer, I am not your lawyer. So don't take the advice of some talking head on the internet. Make sure you talk to your own legal counsel about your specific circumstances. We're only dealing with generic advice right now. Also want to mention my firm offers a free five-day estate planning starter kit so you can start the process of planning your own estate with a quick set of daily email challenges that'll help get you in the right frame of mind to identify the questions you really need to be answering. You'll be spending about five to 10 minutes every day for five days answering these questions and putting you on the road to leaving no unfinished business. The link to start this five-day challenge is in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. If you've got other questions about this, go ahead and leave a question in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.